Um, hi, I'm Matt McDonald. I'm a neurosurgeon and spinal surgeon based at Calvary Adelaide Hospital. I've been a surgeon now for about 20 years and love my job as a neurosurgeon. What first sparked your interest in medicine? Oh, and that's a long, long time ago when I was probably in grade four or grade five. I really just liked to help people and um, the idea of being a doctor seemed good at the time, but I really knew nothing about it back then. And so what made you decide to pursue neurosurgery as a career? This I've always been fascinated with the brain. It really is the last frontier, I suppose, or one of the last frontiers in medicine. And it's exciting because we do different things all the time and there's still so much we don't know about the brain and it's just you know I'm interested in how it works and how we can improve its function uh, I still do a lot of spinal surgery as well which I enjoy but you know my real passion is cranial surgery and how many years did it take to train to become a neurosurgeon mm, probably about 13 years so yeah a long time and did you have any standout teachers or mentors along the way Listen, I've had um, some really uh, great teachers uh, in Adelaide and in Brisbane and I trained and also in Miami. So I suppose I trained doing a complex spinal fellowship over in Miami about 20 years ago and Bath Green, who was uh, my mentor then and head of unit, has been a, a lifelong friend since then. And what was that experience like training and working overseas? Listen, I think it's a, a great experience because it really gives you a different perspective. I think we all have to try and learn from different sources and get as much varied experience. Um, there are multiple ways to do things and not everything's always right. So yeah, going overseas just really gives you a different perspective, gives you a chance to grow, gives you a chance to travel. Um, and I suppose, you know, when we're busy at work, we don't have as much time to travel. So, but it, it just rounds you off as a better surgeon, I think. And when did you return to Adelaide? Or 20 years ago. So I've, I'm, I'm one of the old neurosurgeons in Adelaide now. I used to always think of myself as the youngest, but um, I'm now one of the oldest. And where do you operate at the moment? So I just operate at Calvary Adelaide. Um, I have a really busy private practice here and, you know, operate uh, two or three days a week. So, yeah, I'm super busy. And what are your particular subspecialties or areas of interest? Uh, complex spinal surgery and deep brain stimulation surgery and brain tumor surgery. And can you give us an example of a day in your life as a neurosurgeon? Listen, it's always varied, but I, I, you know, I'm either operating or consulting. If I'm operating, I've had the same team for 20 years, so we're really good at doing what we do. Um, so you know, we may do a variety of cases of spine or cranial in the one day. When I'm consulting, life's usually busy between seeing lots of patients. We have a big team that I work with here. We have physiotherapists and um, uh, spinal GPs that see patients as well. So we can, I can be in and out of you know, multiple rooms seeing multiple patients a day and then dealing with lots of phone calls. And then I have a lot of inpatients because Calvary's got the only 24-hour um, ED in private. So I've got patients up on the ward that we need to see so there's always something going on so my cow's always the last one to leave the car park <laughs> so can you tell us what's the most hours that you've ever worked in one week in one week or oh, like more than 70 so yeah it's a 24 7 job and what do you think is the longest you've ever gone without sleep oh a couple of days when i was a registrar but thankfully those those times have passed, so I usually sleep through the night most nights. What was your first surgery on a real patient? On a, well, the, done by myself was doing a cranioplasty after someone had had a subdural and had their bone flap removed. So it took me a while, but I got there in the end. What's the longest surgery you've ever performed? The longest surgery I've been involved with is um, in about 20 years ago, we separated some conjoined twins in Brisbane. And that surgery took over 24 hours. And would you say that's the most complex surgery you've performed? Not the most complex, but the most tiring. What is the most complex surgery that you've performed? Oh, some of the spinal reconstruction surgeries that we do is complex, or the deep brain stimulation that we do sometimes to get it right can be complex. And what's the most surgeries you've ever performed in one day? 
or it depends on how long they are and how complex they are. But you know, sometimes we can do sort of six or eight operations in a day. And what would you say is the most common surgery that you perform? About 75% of my surgery is spinal surgery and then the rest is deep brain stimulation surgery for movement disorders and also tumour surgery. What are some of the things that you enjoy most about being a neurosurgeon? Uh, the people and the patients, okay, the, um, and the families and, and really making a difference to them. I enjoy everyone's unique story. I often chat to the patients about about who they are and what they do. Um, you know, it's not just an operation I'm doing, it's about trying to make an impact upon their lives. And, you know, I get a lot of joy from talking to people. And what's, uh, what are your standout memories of your career so far? Uh, listen, I, I suppose training in Miami, I have worked a long time in the public hospitals and I had some really good times there. Um, setting, being involved in the setting up of the new Calvary Adelaide Hospital has been a, you know, a real privilege to be involved with that and I still work closely with the team here at Calvary Adelaide. Um, and I suppose, you know, we've done some amazing cases, I've done some amazing cases over the years and so some of those patients, are, you know, are special. And what would you say are some of the biggest challenges? Um, trying to make sure that I've got enough time for my family. Okay, you know, I get home late and, you know, for the third or fourth night in a row and, you know, so I suppose um, I'm fortunate to have a, a patient wife and patient children, but yeah, that's been the biggest challenge. And what would, advice would you give to a student who was interested in pursuing their neurosurgery? I think whatever you want to do, you just need to go with your passions and try, try hard. Um, I think the real question is, are you, you know, are you the right, you know, is neurosurgery for you? Um, and it's more about whether you identify with your mentors and you can see yourself doing it. It's not an easy road for anyone. It can be really, you know, demanding and taxing. But I think it's an exciting thing. So I think it's all about having passion. And you also have an interest in neurosurgical research. So what made you want to pursue research in addition to surgery? Listen, I, I, I've been on the Neurosurgery Research Foundation for 14 or 15 years, I think. Um, I think research is a really important way that we all grow and develop our knowledge. Um, I'm not always good at the laboratory research, um, but I'm good at organising research activities and promoting research. So we do a lot of research uh, based here at Calgary Adelaide as well. And what would you say is the value of the NRF? So I think the NRF um, is is a great organisation to promote, you know, good quality research in Adelaide and also throughout the rest of Australia. I think it's been good for our trainees to be involved with it. It's you know really helped you know put Adelaide on the map, and you know there's some great projects underway. And are there any aspects of neurosurgery that you wish there was more awareness around? Listen, I think. Um, pretty much all the conditions we need to be aware of and I suppose promote because they're all important. And what do you enjoy doing in your spare time? What are you passionate about outside of work? Listen, I love spending time in the garden and I have a country property so we have horses and lots of animals so we're all, always feeding those or you know doing things around that and I'm also um, trying to become a pilot so I'm almost a pilot. Do you have a quirky or interesting fact about the brain or neurosurgery? Listen, one of the things I find really fascinating is how that we can operate on people while they're awake, because the brain's got no feeling. The covering of the brain can have some feeling, and as can the covering of the, the bone, but it's great to be able to interact with someone while we're doing surgery, and it can make surgery much safer. Um, and the other amazing thing is just how delicate some of the brain is. So we can remove parts of the brain and it can have no effect on anyone's neurological function. And then sometimes, like when we're doing deep brain stimulation, all we have to do is adjust the depth of one of the electrodes by a fraction of a millimetre and we get a change. So I find it fascinating and I find out the interplay between neurological functions, you know, uh, and how it all works fascinating.